Let's praise the Lord. Good morning, good morning. Woo! Let's get to Pentecost. Woo! And let's get to 2023. Hey, good morning. This is the School of the Holy Spirit. And I am Bishop Carletta J. Vaughn. And I am a rheumatologist. And I teach Holy Spirit. And I'm telling you, we got help. We have help. We have help. Every situation, every weakness, anything that is going in our emotions around, we have help. The helper, Holy Spirit, has come. And because Jesus has been born Savior of the world, he has given us access to the promise of God. Come on in. Let's go. Yeah. Good morning. God bless you. Let's get our Instagram family in. Hey. Hey. Come, let's pray, the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Sister Rucker. Good morning, Rhonda Dooley. God bless you. Come on in, Pastor John David. Woo. Yes. Good morning, Gloria Dean. Good morning, my bishop. Nobody reads the Bible like you read the Bible. <laughs> Ben all the queens, Dr. Juliet, God bless you. God bless you, Fabio. God bless you. Lily Thomas, good morning. Let's go. Yes, would you like tagging chairs? You come in. Hey, come, let's pray. Good morning, Sister Kirkland. Good morning, Miss Sherwell. Good morning, other brother Jackson. God bless you. Good morning, Apostle. God bless you. Woo. Good morning to my Zoomers. Let's go. To those of you that are coming in from Instagram, we have this coming. Come on in. Hey, good morning, Patricia Thomas. Good morning, darling. Good morning, my Good morning, Yvonne Arena is coming up the timeline. Good morning, Terry. Nick Mullen. Good morning to the puppy, to Andrea. Good morning, Vita. Good morning, Sister Vincent. Good morning, Wanita Campbell. God bless you, Overseer Ryan. Get your members in here. <laughs> Curry Count. Pastor John J. Davis. Hey, we have help. Write it in the chat. Pastor Valerie McCune. We have help. Put it in the chat. Get your bottle of water. We're washing it down. We're not taking it with us. Hey. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Good morning. Coming up the timeline. Sit behind. And listen, don't forget to go to our YouTube page. You can subscribe. And that way, anytime we upload new information, you will get a chance to be notified. Good morning, Zoomers. Good morning, Instagram family. Thank you, like that and share. Good morning, T. Jenkins 472. I love it. Hey, when I think, somebody write it in the chat. I have help. I have help. Drop it in the chat. We have help. Drop, drop it. I have help. Glory. Woo, yes. Praise him. Praise him. Yeah, I want y'all to hear the words to this song. So I got this song in Nigeria. I want you to hear this. Listen to this. Come, let's praise the Lord. Come, let's praise the. Write it in the chat. I have help. His faithfulness. He is El Shaddai. Those words. Mm. Come, let's praise the Lord. Hey, hey. He is the same. Drop it in the chat. I have help. I have help. I have help. Oh, good morning, my sweet sister. Hey. Come, let's praise the Lord. I have help. Drop it in the chat. I have help. It's else die. It's 
spread the news around. Come, let's praise the Lord. Hey. And ever, he is the same. He'll never change. From eternity to eternity, he'll be our God. Woo! Drop it in the chat. I have help. I have help. Hey. I have help. Good morning from North Carolina. Good morning, Best Rita Swain. Good morning, Evangelist Akiba Rogers. Mary Milton. Spencer, good morning. Thank you all. I've been hanging with you all year. Crystal Lee, well, that's Ron Javay, son. I have help. Lenita Jenkins. Woo! Good morning, Lisa Smith Freeman, North Kakalaki. Yarlena McBride, look at y'all, New York, Philippines, thank you, welcome, good morning. If no, it's afternoon day, right? Tamara Manis, wow. Lady Bicey, good morning. Bertha Davis, I have helped. Cynthia Haynes, he will never change, hey. Oh, 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 oh. Good morning, good morning. Hey, Jasmine Lopez. Wanda Sue, Sonia Wilson. Hey, Wendy, good morning, sissy. Yes, Charlie Green. Hey, yes, good morning, Evangelist Akiba. Let's go. Free conference, IG, Facebook, and Zoomers. <laughs> Woo! Drop it in the chat. I have help. Good morning, little sister. <laughs> That's my little goofy sister. Hey, Sean, good morning, Sean Hill. Good morning, y'all. Tamara Manis, Wanda Sue, Carolyn Ann Barnes Boys. Woo! Yes, I have help. Drop it, drop it in the chat. Dr. Alex, God bless you, baby. I receive it. Dr. B, thank you. Come on, the collection. Let's go. Cynthia Haynes, let's go. I have help. Drop it in the chat. Gerald Folsom, good morning, Pastor. Gurgis Ali, <laughs> say North Kakalaki. <laughs> Woo, Linda Oman, good morning, Elder Demetrius Norman. Good morning to my union family. Good morning, Sharon Richmond Williamson. Woo, yes. Drop it in the chat. Pastor William Limon, good morning. Pastor Rita Bill, good morning. I have help. Drop it in the chat, come in. I'm in thinking about it. Hey, yes, I have help. Woo, young, oh, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Come on, praise him with all your heart, with all your soul. Come on, come on. Good morning, Zoomers. God bless you. Hey. Let's go. Destiny moves. Yes, yes. Destiny, no, it is not it's a DVD. This is live. And you can go to my YouTube page and download it. Or you can go to Facebook, uh, School of the Holy Spirit. And you can download it. I've been teaching on it all month. Yes. Hey. So you have it on your phone. Woo! Yes. I listen. You don't want to miss this teaching. I'm telling you right now. Good morning, Dr. Barbara Etheridge. Good morning, Cece Heard. Coming up the timeline, Gloria Warren. Good morning, Wanda Sue, Elder Carmelita Chestnut. So no, it is not a DVD series. However, now technology, YouTube, you can go to our YouTube page, please subscribe and you can download it or you can go right there to the School of the Holy Spirit where you are viewing today and you can find or you can go to Facebook watch and you can find all of them. The collection is there on the Pentecost in a pandemic. So you can actually download it to your phones. 
You can send it to your computer. This information is out there for anybody. This is not a DVD. This is a series, praise God, that's open to everybody all over the world. Thank you for the technology. Mama Pearl, good morning. Hope you're feeling better this morning, Papa Nore. God bless you. Dominique Anderson, I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you. I got, I got, I got to tell you what Holy Spirit said to me. And yes, I have my notes. <laughs> I have my notes. But I'm still on this uh, being anxious and moving out of timing moving out of timing and how that causes offense. I want you to like, tag, and share as you are coming in. I want you to like, tag, and share. And I want you to understand that when you and I, good morning, Sister Denise Curry, Kelly Kells Hughes, good morning, happy Hanukkah, happy Kwanzaa, Mary, 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 post past Christmas and happy new year. Somebody said, why are you doing this uh, lesson on the, the offense? Why are you doing this? I'm doing it because it has come to my attention that we need to get rid of some things before we leave 2022. Now, I want you to get your glass of water. Come on, let's go. I want you to get your glass of water. And this is what we're going to do. You ready? Let's do it. We are going to wash it away. We can't fix it. We can't change it. This look like this little bottle of water, just something simple to help you with a visual. Good morning, Elder Nettie. God bless you, my, my darling elder. Pastor Benina, good morning. Shirley Newton. Kimberly, God bless you. I got to do it, Kim. Regina Adams. Listen, I got to do it for me. And I figure I would just drag y'all with me. I got to do it. We got to wash it away. John Andrew Hart. <laughs> John say, Jesus, be a seatbelt. Listen to me carefully. You can't fix it. Dr. V, we can't change it. This little visual. I want you to just get your water. You may have a cup of water. Glad. And I want you to get coffee or tea or orange juice because that doesn't wash it out. Just a little thing of water. And I and I realize that uh, it's it's <clears throat> it may not appear to you that it's that simple, but it is. I want you to take this little water. Watch this. Come on. I don't want you to pray about it again. I don't want you to rehearse it. I don't want you to bring it up in your testimonies. I want us to wash it away. Elder Carol Ford, God bless you. <laughs> Mama Pro said, I just drank some water. Come on. Carolyn Gregory, it's just Stephanie Hall. Let's go. Let's go. Those of you on Instagram, Biggie Woods, God bless you. Thank you for joining. Rita Swain, 94. Cynthia Haynes, let's go. I don't want you to feel anxious, Cynthia. It's going to be all good. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Pastor William Lamone, let's go. Linda Ullman, Juanita Campbell. Amen, Sister Nettie. I receive it. Michelle Collum, thank you so much, darling. Dr. Patricia James, I want you to listen. Not juice, just water. And this is what we're doing. Look, look, come on. That's it. That's 
it. That's it. Doubt, uh, fear, all of the stuff that we've been holding on to, the spirit of offense, isolation, bitterness, hurt, disappointment, anger, hatred. Listen to me carefully. Lady Vicey, that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it, baby. Prayer has become a cover up for rehearsing and recycling your offense. Somebody grab that and write that for me, please. Tracy Reynolds Robinson, God bless you. Alfred Benyard, Patty Jones coming up the timeline. Crystal Lee, Destiny Moves. Let's go. Let's go. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, my brother. Good morning, prophet. One of the greatest prophets in the body of Christ. God bless you, Bishop. We got to get to Detroit this year. Listen to me carefully. Offense. Do not build a ministry on it. Mm. Do not build a small group around it. I'm here to tell you. Somebody write this down. Prayer has become a cover-up for rehearsing and recycling our offense. Thank you, Felicia. You caught it. Prayer has become a cover-up. Uh, Graham says, yesterday was such a blessing. I replayed it for my stylist, and she was blessed. The light bulb, come on, let's go. Prayer, thank you, Dr. V, has become a cover-up for rehearsing and recycling our offense. Thank you, Bishop Jackson. You caught it. <clears throat> You're not really praying. You're rehearsing and recycling the pain. And I want you, I want you to, I want today, 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 I have help. You see, Holy Spirit has given us this amazing help that we don't tap in to the help. I reached out to, um, I reached out to, and I shared this with you, Prophetess Cordelia Wallace. And I said to her, you are still saving my life. Um, my, my daughter here, um, we call, I call her uh, Little Cub. She calls me Mama Bear. I call her Little Cub. That's Evangelist Tish Walker. And she asked a question yesterday. She said, how, how quick did, it, did you get it? And I'm telling you, in that moment that the prophet spoke it, and this is her, this is what she is in the body. She's not an evangelist. Wallace is a prophet. And I shared with you that when I was in my early, early, and we were both very young preaching in that, in New York, I'm almost positive, I'm going to, I'm going to, I was um, unable to talk yesterday. I was at the dentist all day. Um, uh, okay, thank you, Dr. Kadisha. Offense, those that have been hurt unjustly, those who believe that they have been hurt, absolutely. Absolutely. And people in the second category believe with all of their hearts that they have been wronged. Yes, 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 absolutely. Um, often their conclusions are drawn from inaccurate information, absolutely, or it is distorted. Either way, they are hurt and their understanding is darkened. They judge by the assumption appearance, absolutely, absolutely, that offense. Offense is a stumbling block, a stumbling block, scandalion, 
is the Greek word scandalion. The Old Testament word is a trap, a trap. Now, what, what God shared with me to share with you is that my own misjudgment of timing and seasons can cause me more offense than anything else. And I'm gonna tell you what I mean by that. So when I reached out to uh, Prophetess Wallace, I told her, I said, you are still saving my life. And I sowed a seed. Uh, I sowed a seed, a financial seed uh, in, in her uh, yesterday uh, by Cash App because it was clear to me that prophetically she was still speaking. Now, this is how you know a word came from the Lord. It never dies. This is how you know when a word comes from the Lord, it doesn't die. You don't forget it. And the, the whenever it is released, it still has the same power and impact. Now, that word was released to me over 30 years ago. But even yesterday, it had the same impact because it was a word from the Lord. And even though the word was given to me, hallelujah, it was released yesterday for you, for you. And the word was very simple. You have to pace yourself. And I never will forget. I never will forget it. Um, the question was yesterday, how long? Well, that moment, it caught me. It arrested me. Because I knew in my mind, my mind was swirling. I was always swirling, thinking about, you know, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do in June, what I'm going to do in November, what I'm going to do next year. You know, I was I was all, always there. <clears throat> not, not even understanding that I couldn't even, I couldn't do anything about it, but it's just a way for the enemy to trap us. The word scandalion is the word to trap or to ensnare. And so when we are walking in an offense, whoo, when we are walking in an offense, it is a stumbling block to divert our attention. Ah, the word of the Lord never dies, Dr. Pastor uh, Barbara, it never dies. The word of the Lord is, it has the same impact that it always has. Glory to God. Um, and even yesterday, as I released it, wow, Bishop Porter, wow. Yes, yes. Um, uh, this was over 30 years ago, 35. We're going to figure it out soon where we were. And, and so that's why it's funny to me sometimes when people tell me, you, you got to hear, you got to hear this person, you got to hear this person, you got to meet this person, you got to meet this person, you got to do this. And I'm like, please, you know, we, we've been walking together for the last 35 plus years. We all started out together. We were all contemporaries together. So I'm so glad that our timing, hallelujah, our timing. And so oftentimes when we are in another state, Space in our minds, but our time and timings are not reflective of it. And we have an expectation that others should respect where we are in our minds, but we're not there in our time. Somebody grab that and write that for me. We want, we want the honor of where we are in our minds. We want the fruitfulness of where we are in our minds. We want the prosperity of where we are in our minds. We want the respect of where we are in our minds. But our time is not reflective of what it is in our minds. And so it's easy for us to get ensnared. Uh, it is easy for us to get ensnared. It is easy for us to get ensnared. And when we get ensnared in offense, um, Dr. Kadisha, the root of bitterness begins to grow. 
the root of bitterness begins to grow. And when the root of bitterness <clears throat> gets in our life, then we, the enemy is so, so evil. The devil is so evil. The devil is so evil. Um, when that root of bitterness takes place in our hearts, whew, and now, now the devil says, you got to, you got to show them. You, you got to show them. You got, you got to prove it to them. Wow. <laughs> Woo, wow. And when that root of bitterness is just a precursor to your demise. Now, mixed into that root of bitterness is pride and self-righteousness. I need someone to capture that and write that in the chat. Offense, it has many ingredients. So hurt, disappointment, um, all of those things. <clears throat> but one of the ingredients of offense is self-righteousness. And one of the other uh, ingredients is pride. It's pride. We want the honor. We want the fruitfulness. We want the respect of where we are in our mind. But our time, our time, and any time, I, I remember Turnell Nelson, um, when Jesus asked the question, who do men say that I am? And um, you need to pay attention to these scriptures. These scriptures are real. Who do men say that I am? And they said, some say you are John the Baptist. Some say you are uh, Elijah the prophet. Who do men say that I am? And then he asked them, but who do you say that I am? That's so powerful. Now, Jesus knew who he was in his mind. But what he was doing was testing his time. Somebody write that down. Oh, good God Almighty. He knew who he was in his mind. But he was testing his time. He was testing whether or not what his time was had caught up with what he was in his mind. Okay, I, I, need, I need somebody to hear this. I need somebody that loves the word Monica. Are you listening? Tracy, are you listening? Rhonda, good morning. Good morning. God bless you. I need you to hear me. He was testing his time. You see, if you're the only one that knows you're great, then it's not your time. If you're the only one that knows you're anointed, then it's not your time. Um, if you're the only one that is, is sought after in your own mind, then it's not your time. See, Jesus knew who he was in his mind. But he was testing whether or not it was his time. Good God am I. Who, who do you, who do men say that I am? And I remember Turnell Nelson uh, and all of these, all of these, all of these um, great men and women of God who have impacted my life with the word of the Lord, the prophetic word of the Lord. He said, you are not who you really are until someone else calls it. That you cannot name yourself. You can't name yourself a prophet. I don't care if God said you were. You can't name it. You can't name yourself an apostle. Uh, come on, somebody. I don't care what God has said to you. You can't name yourself. Uh, or wealthy or name yourself, any of these things uh, because uh, it's not your time. You will know when it is your time because someone else will name you. If you go back to uh, John when he was baptizing Jesus, now Jesus was 30 years old. Jesus was 30 years old. I'm teaching today and you don't, you, you, if you grab this, you're going to get out of offense. 
and 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 Jesus had been in obscurity for 30 years now he had uh, emerged as the boy Jesus around Luke 2 uh, and he was before his time now he knew who he was his mommy knew who he was jo uh, Joseph knew who he was and because he was able to swirl the information uh, he was a young boy he was being presented to the temple so it's in the Jewish custom that he was 12 years old and he was mesmerizing he was mesmerizing uh, the people with his information but it wasn't his time it wasn't his time he was only a boy he was only a boy and so uh, even though he was able to handle the information. He didn't have the depth. Even though he was called to be the redeemer of the world, it wasn't his time yet to redeem. And so his parents took him back home and kept him there for another 18 years or so until it was time to release him. Now, many of us need to learn this lesson. We have not learned it well. And even though he was who he was in his mind, it was not yet his time. And so the Bible says that he went down and he humbled himself and became submitted to Joseph and to his mother, Mary. And he obtained favor from God and with man. I don't care if they do ordain you. I don't care if you do have garments. I don't care if you have documents. It may not still be your time. What I mean when I say time, your time of revelation, your time to be revealed. It's not yet your time. It does not matter what they call you, what they called you in the service or what they wrote on the document until your time is revealed you will remain offended and i've been guilty as a leader of bringing people into spaces before their time and uh there had to be some training that there, there, there had to be some training uh, he had to go home and wait. He had to leave uh, prominence and be in obscurity. He had to be hidden. <laughs> he had to be unidentified. He had to be anonymous. Uh, and he didn't get offended. He didn't get offended. The Bible says that he, he went home and submitted and humbled himself. Now, 18 years later, he's walking down the Jordan. And it's just a little small a lake. You would never believe how small it really is until you get there to have such prominence in the scriptures. And John looks up and says, Behold, the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of the world. Behold, the Lamb of God. Now watch this. Now it's his time. Now it is his time. It is his time now. 18 years later. And Jesus did not pronounce himself. John had to name it. You see, we don't want someone else to call our season. We want to call it ourselves. And that's why we get offended. We get offended. We get offended. Because we are not pacing ourselves well. We are not pacing ourselves well. We are not living in the season of the current grace that is upon our lives. So we get offended. John called it. John named him. 
and, and I see people like, you know, they, they, they're they sitting in church. I don't know why uh, they, they won't use me. I don't know why uh, they, they, won't, they won't call me because it's not your time. It's not your time. And so when it's not our time, we are easily offended. And a root of bitterness comes in our heart because we have misjudged our time. When Prophetess Wallace gave me that word, uh, I was traveling quite a bit. I was an evangelist. That's what they named me, Tommy Woods from Bethel Apostolic Church here in Detroit. He called me Evangelist. And so I took on that name, Evangelist. And yet I knew that in 1977, when I had that death experience and I saw Jesus, and he said to me, go back. I have called you as an apostle to my people. Um, I knew that that had occurred, but I didn't go out calling myself apostle because it wasn't my time. The gift was there. The grace was there. The calling was there. And I knew what had happened. I knew what God said, but it wasn't time for the revelation of that. And so when Tommy Wood, Pastor Tommy Wood, Elder Tommy Woods called me evangelist, he named me. Now, really what he named was my season. I'm teaching so good. I want you to hear me. He named my season. And when he named my season, that was the season that many people, thousands, millions met me, was evangelist Carletta Harris. Now, I never thought I was an evangelist. I never called myself an evangelist, but I was named that because that was the season that I was in. You see, when you... and laws, then you will understand why so many people are offended. You will understand why so many people get offended <laughs> because they are not in the right season. Are you listening to me? Now, it was several years later that I was on an elevator and a man from Nigeria, come on, Dr. Sandra, a man from Nigeria said, what is your name? And I said, my name is Evangelist Corletta Harris. And he said, you are an apostle to the Lord's church. Wow, he named me. Now, nobody knew on that elevator who I was. Nobody knew, nobody knew the experience that I had had. Nobody knew that in 1977, when I hemorrhaged to death, and the Lord told me to go back. He said, we're not ready for you here yet. And he said, and I have called you to be an apostle to my people. Go back, preach the gospel, heal the sick, cast out devils and deliver my people from religious bondage. Wow. Whoa. 
Now, what happened? The season of my revelation has now come. Behold the Lamb of God. His season was there. <laughs> Whoa, elevation on the elevator. Come on, somebody. Now, when we don't wait for the naming, this is why people say, oh, I, I, I got a lot of church hurt. I got a lot. Because in your mind, you are one place, but your time is not where you are in your mind. <laughs> Woo! And so no one can treat you like you are in your mind. <laughs> Woo! Come on, somebody. Come on, Erica. This teaching is hallelujah. I had to wait. I had to wait. And it was a long time because I was in my early, that was early, early, uh, uh, late 70s, early ministry. Tommy Wood said evangelist. And that 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 went around, you know, and I, I just owned it because that's what he named me. Hallelujah. But what I'm telling you is, is that it was not what God had said to me. I knew that what God had said to me is that I've called you to be an apostle. <laughs> but it wasn't time for the revelation. Jesus said, who do men say that I am? Oh, my God. So you want the respect. You want the honor. You, you want the you want that. And so you begin to work at that because that's what you are in your mind. But that is not who you are in your time. Ooh, who am I helping? Who am I helping? And you say, well, what, what, Jesus said, who do men say that I am? Listen, you got to go with it. Some say you're a prophet. Some say that you are Elijah. Some say you are John the Baptist. <laughs> but now he has this intimate group of people and now he has been with them for two years. He says, well, who do you say that I am? And Peter, by the spirit of God, by revelation of the Holy Ghost, says, oh, thou art the Christ, son of the living God. Up until that point, they didn't know who he was. Even though Jesus knew who he was. This is why some churches don't last. This is why people start churches and they don't last. This is why people start ministries and they don't endure. This is why people, you know, don't, don't be mad at me. But this is why your church closed. This is why your ministry has not taken off. This is why your bank account is not reflective of, of who you say you are in the spiritual realm. Yay! It is because... It's not time for that. Oh, my God. And that is when you get offended. You get offended. <laughs> Hallelujah. You, you didn't do anything wrong. You just were in the wrong time. You, you, this is why, this is why, this is why people weren't drawn to you. This is why nobody uh, 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 applauded that decision. This is why, because it wasn't time. And this is why you become offended. You get hurt. You get bitter. You isolate. Not because... Not, not because someone did wrong. It just was that you were out of timing. So when Prophetess Wallace gave me that word and said, you're going to have to deal with pacing yourself. Now, I already knew who I was by the spirit, what God had said. Now, can you imagine me trying to make that happen? Me trying to make people respect me as an apostle. That's what some of y'all do. You way out of season. 
You wear the wrong garments. I talked to one of my daughters. I said, I don't know why you wear that. That's not who you are. And, and people get offended because you want people to validate what it is that you've heard. But it's not time. not time and that's why we get offended now there, there's a scripture i want us to read and uh get your paper bibles <laughs> i don't know why this didn't give me that turn. it wasn't your time you don't like we don't like that they did me wrong no it wasn't your time that wasn't the leading of holy spirit it wasn't your time but i was ordained and i wanted to do it My God, my God, my God. Look at it. Look, look, look. Let me grab this. Come on, Pastor Erica. She said, you're talking to me total transparency. I was ordained as an itinerant elder 12. I had to wait till 22 to be appointed to a church. I was offended. Oh, my God. Come on, elder. But now I'm clear that I had to wait. Mm. Woo, who else? Who else? Who else am I talking to? <laughs> You got people walking around here with purple shirts on and crosses across and ain't nobody called you. It ain't even your time. You know, people just think that you don't know how to dress. They have no idea that you call yourself a bishop or you call yourself a apostle and that you're wearing the garments of a officer when you have not been commissioned. Who am I talking to? You know, in the military, you get court martial for that. <laughs> yeah see god god knows what he's doing god's timings are perfect Ooh, is anybody hearing i want you to get this scripture and i want you to go with me to first corinthians chapter number six and it's not a scripture that probably you would use uh for this <laughs> Woo, come on come on come on uh 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 y'all got on collars three inch collars when you should should have on a tab you gotta got on two inch collars when you shouldn't have on a collar <laughs> you just go and buy three inch collar three inch collars for bishops and those who are in the episcopacy uh two inch collars are for pastors and elders one inch collars are for ministers uh, that that are not yet ordained or depending upon your liturgical expression you may wear a tab collar but we don't care we just go to the store and buy and, and then we wonder why nobody is respecting us Ooh. <laughs> is anybody hearing me is anybody hearing me is anybody hearing me and i was i was looking at uh this text and it doesn't have anything to do uh with it, probably anything other than it is just what the holy spirit gave me <laughs> oh my god it's just what the holy spirit gave me so i just have to give it to you and i really don't have anything <laughs> i don't really have anything other than it's what he gave me. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 6. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Mm, mm, mm. Hallelujah. Who, who, who am I talking to? <laughs> Wearing the wrong garment, all out of sync, uh, or just everything, and just angry, just, just angry, just, just mad because, because you don't understand the difference between calling and time and we get so offended we get so offended we get so yes patty jones we get so mad when when we're not honored in the way in which we see it in our minds and you gotta understand spirit time somebody write that down you got to understand spirit time. You can't make God change his mind about his time. Woo! 
somebody, somebody, somebody put that in. You cannot make, you cannot make God change his mind about his time. Because he understands the longevity and the perfect moment and the perfect season that he wants to release you. Woo! Hallelujah. Somebody write that down. We must understand spirit time. You cannot make God change his mind about his time. Woo! Oh, but I just, I just feel, I feel a burden. I just feel, and I believe this, and I, and I tell people, are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. You can't make, thank you, Ms. Sheba. Thank you, Mr. Messenger. You cannot make God change his mind about your time. Hey. Whoa, somebody, 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 somebody catch this because there is something called spirit time. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Rabba Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? <laughs> Woo, and I was reading this, this, this text. And I, I, I really want to read it all, but I, I know I can't. <laughs> oh, Rabbi Ashika. Hallelujah. And it talks about how just a little of something can get in us. How immorality, how unlawfulness, how little things can get in us. And it doesn't have to be a lot. Uh, Brother Chaplin, it doesn't have to be a lot of anything that gets in us. Uh, it can just be a little bit. It can be just a little. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. Do you not know that your body is the temple of Holy Spirit? Who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own, somebody Get that for me. First Corinthians chapter number six, verse 19 and 20. Do you not know? Now, this text deals with a lot of stuff, immorality, a lot of stuff was going on in the Corinthian church, but I want to draw this scripture out. Do you not know that your body is the temple of Holy Spirit? Whom is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own. I'm going to read it again because I don't think we get it. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, whom you have received from God, and you are not your own? Okay, nobody's going to like this. Woo, somebody write down, I'm not my own. My time, I'm not my own. I'm not my own. And see what happens when Cordelia Wallace began to prophesy that word to me. And God was so mindful of me that while she was preaching, she turned to me. She didn't know me. I didn't know her. She was preaching the word of God. And she was preaching the word of God. And Holy Spirit put me on her mind, in her mouth. Woo! Shake him on my seat. Glory to God. And that girl was preaching and turned to me and said, you are a, a, a voice. Uh, and it was something like for generations. We're trying to re, re, reconstitute it. But at the end, what she said was, and your only problem is that you will have to learn how to pace yourself. Good God Almighty. Woo! Shout am I Yosha. Woo! Who am I talking to? Woo! God, I love my God, I'm a horse. Woo! God, I thank you for today. That word is just as fresh. Oh my God. 
listen to this uh thank you charlotte thank you it says or did you realize that your body is a sacred place the place of holy spirit don't you see that you can't live however you please squandering what god paid such a high price for the physical part of you is not some piece of property belonging to the spiritual part of you god owns the whole works so let people see god in and through your body woo, 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 woo. oh my god oh my god my god i feel your power right now she said your only problem is you're going to have to learn to pace yourself. And it, man, uh, Tish asked me yesterday, she said, well, when did you get it? Did it take time? I caught it that very moment because I knew what I was wrestling with. But let me say this, and I want to extend that answer, but every day. So, so, so when certain things happened, I was trying to buy a house uh, two years ago. Uh, many of you remember my condo downtown got flooded. And oh, I was just, I was just so uncomfortable. And I was trying to live there. And I put a lot of money in that space and I couldn't live there. The girls came and said, Ma, you gotta get out of here. All right. I'm on the water. I'm watching everything. I remember my home in North Carolina, all of these different moments in my life. Ooh, shake it up a Honda. Ah, 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 Dr. Dr. B. <laughs> My God, listen to me. Listen, and, and, and I'm uh, it's not just ministry, it can be marriage, it can be parenting, it can be marriage. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, because you got pregnant, may not have been the time, may not have been the right time. All the pieces were not in place because you got married at a beautiful ceremony, but it might not have been the right time, it might be the right person, but it wasn't the right time. We moving around, doing too much, just, oh my God, just all over everything. I think about all of that. I think about how God has blessed me. And those things happen at specific times, specific times. Just, and then we also have to know when that time is up, when that season ends, when it begins and when it ends. Oh my God. And so a couple of years ago when I got into the flood, right before the pandemic, I was like trying to buy a house. And then we got into a, a, a rental space, a beautiful space, but it wasn't mine. And I knew it. And I and I got into that space and I was just miserable. And so I kept looking for houses. I kept looking for houses. I kept looking for houses. And one house was near me and I, I, was, I was trying to... And they, think they sold that thing right out from under me. And I was, I was, I was angry. I was, I was a little upset about that thing, but it wasn't time. Could it be that a lot of things that have not happened for you the way you wanted it to is because of timing? Not anybody did wrong. Not anybody mistreated you. Not anything was the devil, but it was not the time. We make too many decisions out of our own flesh. We make too many decisions and we don't consult. We don't believe that our bodies belong to the Holy Spirit. We don't believe that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We don't always believe that we are not our own. Dr. Black, we don't always remember. So we're forcing, we're trying to force. Ain't nobody going to look me. I know who I am in the spirit. I know what I, I know what I heard. But could it be that some of our disappointment and some of our offense and some of our anger and some of our regret is because we were simply mismanaging timing? Oh, my God. Huh. And I just want to read this little scripture. And you don't have to go to it because my time is up. Speaking of time, when it talks about Galatians 5, 5 and 9. And we'll get to this. A little leaven leavens the whole lump. It says you ran well. 
but who has hindered you from obeying the truth? Why is it that now what I what 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 you learned from me before you was ready to lap it up like a dog, but now you have become estranged? You ran well, but what now has hindered you? Do you not know that a little leaven leavens the whole lump? Do you know that just a little bit of offense? <laughs> Do you know that just a little bit of disobedience? Do you know that just a little bit of regret? Do you know that just a little bit of disappointment leavens, ruins the whole lump? You're running superbly who cut in on you, deflecting you from the true course of obedience. This detour doesn't come from the one who called you into the race in the first place. Please don't toss this off as insignificant. It only takes a minute amount of yeast to permeate an entire Could it be that just a little bit, who has gotten in your ear? Who has gotten in your heart? Who now, you, you were running well. You were running well, but now who has deflected you from the true course of obedience and humility and submission? Who has done this to you? Who have you opened your ear to? The one that is lying to you about your time. The one that is telling you it's your time. They're trying to hold you back. This You should be so much father. That's the one. You ought to get married. You know what God said. You know what the Lord said. You need, who has hindered you that now you are so offended? I got to go, folks. I, I promise you, this has got to be the fastest hour. <laughs> and, and, woo. Woo. Listen, you have got to learn to pace yourself. Who has hindered you? Who is deflecting? Who is in your ear? Who is massaging your anxiety? Who is it that's feeding the, the gorilla at the, at the circus? Who's feeding that monkey on your back? And now you you angry, you offended with bishops, and you mad at the organization, and you ain't going back to church, and, 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 and they don't want me to get married. Girl, young girl, oh my God, I can tell y'all stories. I thought I said, baby, it's not your time to get married. They ran off and eloped anyway. Nearly killed her, nearly lost her mind. And one of my mothers in the church, Mother Cohen, she came to me. She said, Bishop, I thought you were wrong. She said, I couldn't believe that you told her that it wasn't time for her to get married. She said, but I got to come to you and let you know I was wrong. You were right. It nearly killed her. She nearly lost her mind. I can tell you story after story of what we do. My daddy told me, she, he said, do you really want to do this? I said, daddy, I got to do it to people. And he said, I can walk you out just like I can walk you in. It wasn't time. Whew. And a lot of our offense is hanging right in that, in that right there. Because who we were in our mind. God could not honor it in time. I got to go. Aren't you glad you got the Holy Ghost? Ain't you glad you can purge this mess out today? Whoa, glory to God. Thank God for Jesus. And thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Ghost. I got to go. <laughs> Woo!